this is Anna with the CSC 1001 and 7030 assignment 3 help video. So this is just going to be a quick overview of the assignment and if you're stuck, how to get started and tackling it. Before I get into the nitty gritty of it though, I'll have a quick uh, example of what we're expecting. So let's have a run of it. Control save, five. Cool. So here's our assignment. This is for task one. And what we're doing is just a game. Literally that's it, a game. So, here's how to play it. This is a game Lolo, by the way. So, here's a group of tiles. It has three. Once it's a group of tiles, they're the same color. You can click it, and it adds three to your score right here. Three. Here, we have four in a group, so it should add four to our score. Another scoring thing is that here's three, but there's already a three number inside. So, it should add two to your score because three, four, five. Well, sorry. Yeah. Cool. Another key thing is that if it's not in a group and you hit it, so this one wasn't, it's a single tile, it says can't activate tile at position 2-2. Two, two. So go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Cool. That's how positioning works, by the way. Also, you have this lightning mode. It should start off with one, and then after every couple of moves, up to you on deciding. So whether it just be random chance, every 5% random chance of getting a lightning, or say every 20 moves you get a lightning mode and what happens here is if you click it so it's now activated and in striking mode you can click on any tile and it removes it it shouldn't change your score after using it it should automatically deactivate as you can see as this button is deactivated it takes one off your counter and yeah once the counter is at zero it should completely deactivate so now i can't actually click the button cool so let's have a quick view on the assignment so, this as you can see is all about graphical user interfaces, so that's your GUI. And we've been talking about GUIs for quite a while, so if you start off with the tutorials, as well as look at lectures and the MyPies, because they're really going to be helpful on thinking about what to pack, framing, buttons, and whatnot. Also, keep in mind that there's going to be a couple updates. They're not going to be any major updates, it's just to help clarify common questions we found in the practicals. Unlike the previous assignment, so we've broken this task into three bits. So task one with your basic features, then task two, and then task three. Master students, you guys have an extra five marks allocated to you, and I'll talk to you about that in the end of the video. I'd really recommend doing task one first before you so even start trying to do task two. Because task one's all your basic features, and you can't implement intermediate features without your basic features. In what order you do for this bit though within task one is up to you. So say if you can go, cool, I do I can do file menu, but I'm not sure how to do the logo, do the file menu first. Also, this time we've been really specific as well with the what marks we're giving out. So with these six marks of functionality for task two, you have your auto playing game, which is three marks, and your loading screen, which is one mark. So if so do as much as you can because part marks are always amazing as well as say if you can't do all the keyboard shortcuts which is control n for a new game and control l for lightning mode activation feel free to just do one and maybe you can get some potential partial marks but yeah try and attempt task one two and three in that order again so i was saying functionality marks there's also another 30 percent at for code quality and documentation. Code quality, yes, is just like last time where we're going, cool, do you have if statements and tries and accepts? But also now asking, guys, can you please be way more condensed and specific and concise with your code? So yeah, cool. A thousand lines of code is great, but not really. Try and make it more condensed and use smart code. So try and think about how can I reduce my code size from a thousand lines to less? So, you might have noticed that we're like, cool, here's all the marks and whatnot, and however, there, there's a lot of logic in this game, as you can tell, with like the drawing of the grid and finding if it's active or not and removing it. So, as a result, just like last time, we have support code for you guys. Support code is just when you download the zip from the course website, there should be support code. You're going to notice there's going to be a lot of files in the support code. This is actually just for to help you guys. So, for example, with task one, we recommend to look at a uh, your play game, game, asterisk, colors, support files. So if you're doing task one, don't really worry about tilegenerators.py. 
And how we're saying this game slash underscore asterisk is there's going to be a couple game modes like uh, unlimited lucky seven regular. So for task one, you just need to implement one of these. For task three, you need to implement all of them. Task one, we don't mind, but I recommend personally just regular because it's simpler scoring. So let's get have a look into one of the really important support files. So here's your base Lolo app. And I'd recommend having a really good understanding of this because it's going to really, really help you and save a lot of time. So you have a cool method here, activate, which C attempts to activate the group of tiles or the tile at a given position. So you've got to give it a position. If it can, it will remove it for you. Easy, said and done. If it can't, so it's not a group of three, it will raise an index error. So think about that and how you can use that to your advantage for creating those dialogue pop-ups going, ah, you can't do this, it's not in a group of tiles. Also, you have this remove, which doesn't check if it's in a group of tiles. So it just removes it straight away. Finally, you have this reset game over and score, which you need to implement yourself. Cool. Let's have a look at the assignment now. Cool. So let's have a look at task one. This is the first one I'd recommend having a look at. So I talked about the logic and a little bit of lightning mode, so let's get more into the actual thing sections we're talking about. So app class is this this window here. It's got everything in it. So status bar is this bit here. So you have your regular mode, which for me is regular mode, but you can have any game mode name you have up here. So lucky seven or unlimited. Then you have your score here and it should be updating as you go. So now our score is eight. So it says eight. Think about using labels and frames, right? But also think about what we did in tutorials on how to update texts and whatnot. We have the logo, so we're not asking you guys to be artistic with this logo, this Lolo bit. As you can see, I'm not very artistic. But think about maybe this O is pretty much like a circle, right? And the L is just a whole bunch of lines stuck together. So think about what you can do with shapes and the TK library with the canvas class and the shapes. Just check the uh, documentation from Python documentation libraries online and should hopefully be good to go. So we have pop-up dialogues, so if you can't activate it, so a single tile for example, you should just go can't activate tile at blah and you can hit OK and whatnot. Also trust me, I can't lose this game, but if you do lose this game you should just say thank you for, like congratulations, you have scored for me 18 points. Cool. Um, next thing we have this file menu so this is up here your cascade bar hint hint nudge nudge that's a key word this I'm not gonna be talking much depth into it because we already have an example of a working cascade bar in tutorials with this new game and exit we have these keyboard shortcuts control N and control L control N is for new game control L is for your lightning mode activation and lightning button so this is what I'm talking here when you start the game you should already have one to your counter in lightning mode it's up to you to choose how you want to um, give out lightning mode to your counter, so every X amount of moves or whatnot. And as I was saying, if you click it, it's now activated in striking mode. You can remove any tile, and once you have, it should automatically deactivate to back into deactivate and remove one from the counter. If it's at zero, it should automatically just toggle off, so you can't click the button is what I'm trying to say. Um, have a look at the tutorials. We have already an example of this toggling button if you are a little stuck on what to do. So this is task one at a glance. Hopefully it's helped with understanding where to go and what to do. Look at those tutorials as well as look at Piazza and my Pi tutors as they'll be really helpful. Think about what frames, where to pack, your expanding and your filling. Plus also have a look at the support codes. They're going to be really helpful with this grid bit. Now let's go into task 2 and task 3. I'm just going to let you know now, since you guys already have done two assignments, as well as you've already done task 1 of this assignment, uh, we're going to be a little bit more hands-off as help. But still, if you do have any questions, we're happy to help. So, here's task 2 slash task 3. I've been a little... there. So, this is for me task 3. So, for task 2... Just forget this choose game mode button, otherwise it looks practically the exact same. So, as I was saying before, you do need two ta uh, need two apps. So, Lolo app for your task 1, Lolo app 2 for your task 2 slash task 3. Cool. 
So here's your loading. Oops. Okay, here's your loading screen, right? So this is this grey bit here with your logo, your text field with your name. Hint, hint, that's right. There's another keyword you should be recognizing from tutorials. You can type in your name. You have play game. High score is an exit game. This auto playing game is this bit here. It should automatically be playing a game. So I would really recommend having a look at the support code. Again, a lot of this logic is already done for you. It's just about piecing together the different methods we have already given to you. High score should have another pop up window with having a title leaderboard, plus also this label here with best player with the person at the very top of the leaderboard with their name and what score they got. What happens here is you should be reading an adjacent file with the names and the scores and display the best, like, Yilmaz finishing grid. So when he finished and lost the game, this is what his grid looked like. Cool. Um, that should again be in your high scores manager. F support file is what I'd be really recommend looking at because I think we're doing a lot of the reading in JSON files for you. Cool. Once you hit play game, this should look practically the exact same as your app one from your task one. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, just reuse your same code. It's just the exact same. Everything's the same. Cool. So that's your task two. So for task three is this bit. So the added bits before task three is two major things. So we have this choose game mode. So if you click on this button in your loading screen, it should take you to this pop-up. Pop-up should have like regular, make 13, lucky, 7, unlimited, and any additional objective game modes that you've added. So you should be able to click on this, each of these buttons, this radio buttons. And you, once you hit OK, you can go lucky 7, and the auto playing game mode should have updated to show lucky 7. Now the key thing that in task 3 is if you hit the play game, you need to enter your name in the text field. Otherwise, it should give you a pop-up. Once you hit OK, you can hit play game. And here it is. It's practically the exact same. Cool. And you should just implement what game you have. Yeah, cool. That's task three. Another thing is objective game mode. So objective game mode is like if you played any other game on your phone and whatnot, it should be using just objectives. So, cool. Can you please get can, like remove a tile which has twenty four yellow or whatnot, right? And the way we want you guys to do this is it should be reusing in a JSON file. So if you don't understand what a JSON file is, you're like, oh, how do I get started? What could I do? Have a look at your high scores manager's JSON file and look at that format as well as the support code on how to try and read in a file. Plus also, here's uh, what we're expecting in your uh, JSON file. So your modem, da 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 da, as well as your objectives. You need to be really clear to the user and display what objectives they need to get. So objectives are not part of the game grid, but should be displayed in their own widget above the game grid. And it should clearly display what they need to achieve and what they've already achieved. It should be like grayed out or something like that. Cool. So that is task two and three. If you guys have any questions, and I understand I was going really quick, I just want to keep this video condensed and short for you guys, so it's in a more accessible format, feel free to ask on Piazza and practicals and tutorials, as well as the ITLC tutor room on GP South Floor 2 are always really helpful, guys. Cool. So that's everything for 1001 students. I'll quickly go on to CSC 7030 students as well. So with you guys, you guys have an extra five marks allocated. And this is where we're going at the very bottom of the task sheet. Is going, okay, you've had two assignments to follow a task sheet and you've done task one, two, and three. So can you please write your own? It's your guys to take control and decide what you're gonna program, what additional functionality that you're gonna get. So for example, We've suggested a couple, like saving and loading game modes, adding multiplayer or background music. Some are easier than others. However, though, to get the full marks, you need to do multiple of these suggestions. Also, feel free to install third-party Python modules. However, though, if you do, in the PDF file that you are meant to submit, showing exactly, going, cool, I've tried to do this multiplayer bit, this is what I did, here's my background music attempt and whatnot. You also need to include how to install those third party modules, going exactly what to do and where to find these libraries, as well as what specific versions and what to do for Mac and Windows users.
Cool. Uh, another key thing that I need to mention is that you need to submit this PDF in, sorry, you need to submit it in PDF format. You can't submit it in text or document, otherwise we start deducting marks from you. Hopefully that's really helped with you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, just like 1001 students, just Piazza, Chutes, Prax, we'll be happy to help. Get started early, and good luck!